Another interesting fact about the day, Yom HaKippurim, is that the language can be broken down in a slightly different way. When we look at Yom HaKippurim, which it's traditionally called, it is the Day of Atonement. That hey tells you that it's the, and the the, uh, because of the conjunction of the two nouns, day and atonement, the the goes up before the, the day. The Day of Atonement, even though it's plural, atonements. If we take away that hey, we can read it a different way, which would be Yom Ka Purim, a day like Purim. So the rabbis teach that the Day of Atonement is a day like Purim. How can we understand this? Well, both days involve fasting. We know that we fast on the day of Yom Kippur and that Esther fasted before going in to see the king. As we read the story of Purim in the book of Esther, uh, both days are pleading for our lives. Um, in uh, one in an eternal sense and one uh, that took place in time in Babylon. And even though Yom Kippur, which we call Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement is probably the saddest day of the year and Purim is probably the happiest day of the traditional Jewish year, the rabbis draw a parallel between these two days. What does this holiday, this uh, appointed time of atonement mean in the spiritual life of a believer? Well, this day is as yet unfulfilled by Yeshua. The shadow picture of this day is revealed in the rituals that are prescribed for the day. And in the final day of atonement, we will see that all believers are covered by the atoning blood of Yeshua and saved from eternal judgment. It is the day of the final blast of the shofar, which inaugurates the counting of the Jubilee years. Leviticus 25.9, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. In Revelation we see uh, chapter 8 verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound, and in 10.7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, and he, as he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. It is the day when the high priest makes atonement for himself, his family, and the nation. Reading from Leviticus 16, verse 6, And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house, and he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. In verse 16, he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Incense and blood are offered in the Holy of Holies. There was only one time a year when the high priest was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. We read about again in Leviticus 16, verse 13 and 14. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before Yahweh, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he not die. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. Yeshua is our high priest. Hebrews 2:17. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. In Hebrews 4:14, 4, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yeshua the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Hebrews 7:26, For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, defiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. 
Yeshua is also the perfect sacrifice for our sin. In 1 John 2, 2, And he, that is Yeshua, is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. In Hebrews 10.10, 10, By the which we will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua the Messiah once for all. And in verse 12, But this man, that is Yeshua, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. It is Yeshua's blood that provides atonement for the believer. In Ephesians 1, 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Romans 3, 25, Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. In 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yeshua, the Messiah, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. In 1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We see that in the end times, Yom Kippur, that incense is offered in Revelation 5, 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. In Revelation 8, 3, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. In verse 4, And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended before God out of the angel's hands. At this time the people will be judged. Matthew 25, 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And believers at this time are not covered, and they will be subject to wrath. Revelation 6, 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, this is the evil people are saying to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. And in Revelation 11:19, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. So in both of these verses, we have the picture of the brimstone falling from the sky uh, as a kind of punishment for the unbelievers. And also, this is the only place where we see the ark. Uh, just as the high priest saw the ark on Yom Kippur when he went into the Holy of Holies, we see it revealed here in Revelation, the ark that's in heaven. Believers in that day will be covered. Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. John 6:54 Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last this is Yeshua speaking about himself In 1 Thessalonians 5:9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yeshua the Messiah I'm sure there are many other ideas that you can think about as you meditate on these different word roots as they relate to the Day of Atonement. In the meantime, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.